going to do this officially. This is the rest of the crew that's coming into North Caribou here right now. Who do we have here? That's Dave. 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 Yeah. Great. Right on. Dan here. Dan? Hello, Mike. Dan? Glad to meet you. should be a good week, yeah. I think we'll be all right. I think so. Who's our host over here? Mr. Brad Hagan. How art thou? Very good, sir. Good to see you. It uh, looks like a good day for flying. I guess I was wrong about the weather. I'm so glad because you would make the perfect weatherman. Oh, that's right. You have a history of that. Well, <laughs> smarty pants. Everything's good. Everything's in the plane. We're like ready to roll. Jennifer, are we good? Are we good? That was the smoothest spin ever, actually. Yeah. We're getting the last little bit into the plane here right now. Yeah. That's a lot of beer and pop. You know what? Um, it's not all for you. you oh? Uh, I did have a serious conversation with Brendan, and he says no matter how much fun you guys have, he's going to be serious and catch the fish. Oh, we're serious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we're serious. We're very serious. So let's make a statement right, right now to all guests of North Caribou and future guests of North Caribou. Success fall squarely on like the ability to cover as much water as possible in a week burning lots and lots of gas right rob <laughs> i i as all i i love the man dearly i have a lot of respect for him that that is so full of hey guys hey guys where's brendan i can't see him oh there he is He's okay. the we're off section. Number two. Got a little bit of a tricky operation for our inaugural trip on North Caribou here. We gotta get out some the inner part of the dock, and Brendan's gonna walk us around because it's a little windy. There we go. We got it now. <laughs> All right. It's a little bit wavy. We got some white caps. We're not going to go far on this, our uh, inaugural outing on North Caribou. We're just going to go cast some walleyes, going to find a protected spot. We're going to wait for the other lads because they're going to join us. These motors, they're old, uh, older Evernote E-Tex. They have electric start and tilt. Pretty sweet. We're drifting here pretty fast. It's actually not that protected in this little neck down. This is a saddle between uh, an island right there and the mainland right here. Really close to camp. We didn't want to go far. It's late in the afternoon of our first day. And, uh, well, I've got the old standby on here. The old Northland Impulse Paddle Tail. First fish of the trip. I'll we've been, it. we've been, uh, just I'm trying to figure out what's going on in this neck down here. Just around the corner from camp. This side is like four to six feet deep. The other side is like 18, 19, and uh, there's a few walleye here. There's well, it's the first one. Second one. Now, Arch, Brett, did you have one? I, I did have one. one. Yeah. The impulse paddle. Yes, indeed. It's the only there. bait you need. One. One. <laughs> Should I turn it off now? Well, hold on. Let's just see if we can do this again on cue. They don't like to bite whenever we're filming. It's always how it goes. Yeah. It's a little shallow right here, actually. It's like three feet. I think what we're probably gonna do is like tuck our tuck in behind at the end there in the lee of this. 
I mean, there's walleye everywhere here. It is very windy. Oh. It is very windy first evening. Here's one. Hey, you're gonna, oh! You're gonna make me want to put on a jig head here. Oh, there it is. In oh. very shallow water. Super shallow water. I'm in three feet of water here right, right now. Three feet. Oh, yes, sir. The walleyes are on the flats. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, we're fishing this spot only because it is a spot, it's a neck down, but this side here, normally the other side, there's a reed point right there. That's the apex spot, but we're just here because it's less windy. It's a little bit more protected. But on North Caribou Lake, it doesn't matter where you go. No. You're still gonna catch walleye. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, I, I just had another one. Exactly. We're gonna have to actually uh, inform those lads to get over on this side. They're right in the teeth of the gale over there. <laughs> it's probably yeah. pretty hard to see them. In about 20 feet of water. Yeah. Drifting very fast without a drift sock. Oh, <laughs> Brendan's fooling around. A little walleye. We're getting tons of walleye. It's it's pretty wild. We're in like four feet of water here in this neck down. And uh, yeah, I need a drift sock. I don't have the drift sock. Not too shabby for like the little first inaugural session here on our trip. Oh, well, he's got a clicker. Can you see that? He's got a little clicker. <laughs> We're counting fish apparently. There's another one. Another walleye. That's a chunky one. That's a chunky monkey. He's a jumper. Everywhere we go in the north, these pearl or white colored um, plastics, either the paddle tails or the twister tails, are like go to baits. He's got, yeah. got some blue on his fin. Yeah, he's a blue walleye. Blue. Oh, careful, buddy. He's a blue finned walleye. The other guys are behind us. We're Bringing up the rear, getting their sloppy seconds. <laughs> it's okay. This one feels chunky. Chunky like, monkey. Yeah. Big head shakes on this guy. Probably like an 18 incher, but this is a pretty light rod. This Man, is lighter. I got a medium light. I yeah. got well. You got a medium. No, this is the extra fast jigging rod, but I got a 1,000 reel on there. It doesn't. But anyway. Oh, braid, even the little walleyes. Oh yeah, it's not that big. Oh, I got one on the reel. Oh. I'm just, I can't even reel in. Probably. It's pandemonium. Not a bad start for the trip. There, oh mean, my god, it's things that's happening my jig. Oh man, chunky monkey. Oh that's, yeah, that is a good one. Not bad, eh? Yeah, right. I just threw back about a 22 incher. Got it. Oh, we got the clicker going here. We got the clicker. <clears throat> They're all not giants, but nice, mostly really nice solid fish. No bait required. Throw it out there again, buddy. That's on the electric chicken, uh, Northland Impulse. Yeah, I used, to, I used to swear by this thing. But. Yeah, it's like sort of hot pink and yellow. It's an interesting color. I think oh, we got a little double going here. As soon as we turn the camera off. Well, we've had about eight doubles already. Oh, I gotta do the two clicks. <laughs> Cameras all over the place here. That's okay. We can land both of them. Fish number one? Nope. No? No? I'll get a picture of you holding both, actually, if you don't mind. Okay. This guy doesn't pop out of my hands, which is a very real possibility. Double. I'll get a picture. There we go. Oh, yeah. 
What a great little session of fishing just to take the edge off in our first day at camp. Easy fishing. Yeah. Okay, so four years ago when I was here in August with Brendan, we did really well in the spot. This is still our first day. We got tired of slamming walleyes, right, Bren? Yeah, they get boring. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a spot where we caught good numbers of big pike. There's a neck down, kind of leads into a large bay, and 10 to 12 feet of water four years ago with cabbage. It's probably evening. I don't know what it is. Seven now, something like that. Really late. Yeah, it's getting there. Well, we just we got to keep pushing. The doctor is oh, in. Oh, the doctor is in. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're gonna see if we can cap off our day with a decent bike. So I'm looking at the graph. Oftentimes, when we fish these spots, especially now with low light and no sun, you don't the, the cabbage doesn't grow to the surface. So you got to watch the graph and. Uh, see it on the graph. I would say just about to enter the area where it was like loaded with cabbage four years ago. Brendan is like a dog on point. He's just ready to go. Brendan's excited. This wind is literally perfect. It's going to blow us right out. Okay. I'm going to shut the camera off and start casting. That was the first cast. Yeah. It's not a big fish. That's sure slammed. Slammed it good though. Orange and copper doctor. Little hammer handle. I feel like we're going to be doing this quite a lot this trip. Yeah. You're going to need those pliers, I would assume. Should be okay. Yeah, you don't need them? No. Okay, good. It's not rocket. There we go. Okay. Third cast. Third cast. The yeah, doctor the doctor is in. Yes, sir. Orange and copper. Orange and copper doctor. It's a really nice fish. It's a thick fish. Oh, yeah. Way, way to go, buddy. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, there he is. Got to get the cradle out. I could grab this thing. Well, it's barely hooked. <laughs> Here. Almost, almost, almost. We got it. Yes. Nice fish, buddy. There we go. Woo! It's a good start to the trip. Oh. Right after the first I, one. A few casts later, and I got a high 30s, maybe 40. Well, that's another nice one for sure. Ridiculous. That orange and copper doctor. It's a nice, big, thick one, actually. Super nice, thick one. <clears throat> you want to land that one without the cradle? It's barely hooked for whatever it's worth. Ben's a pro. He can do this. Your call. I got it. Atta boy. Oh yeah. Chunky guy. 
Very nice. Not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. It's about 9 a.m. ish. I think something like that, Brad. Yeah. Yeah. He just woke up about half an hour ago. Um, they were they were calling for all day rain, and it actually is spitting lightly right now. But uh, it's supposed to be basically windless all day long and less than a millimeter. So we're gonna go on a bit of a run today. We'll make hay while the sun shines because they're calling for like 50k gusts the next couple of days. So, I think we're going to concentrate on pike first. Pike only. Pike only. Okay. Anyway, should be fun. Spoons and blades. The order of the day. Find the cabbage and you'll find the pike. We just kind of got to our spot. We've got three or four axe handle sized pike, right? Yep. I think this one's pretty decent. Oh yeah. We, we, we drove through like a monsoon rain. It's not supposed to be thundering until 6 p.m. according to the forecast, but there's thunder rumbling in the distance again. You can never trust the forecast in the north. No. It can change. But um, anyway, whatever. We, I contemplated heading back and waiting it out because it was like seriously heavy rain. It stopped for about five minutes. Now it just started again right now, but um, the, they're on. It's a simple pattern find the cabbage in like six to 12 feet of water. And this is a spot that we actually really haven't fished before. It's kind of off of a, a point. But the key to all of these spots is um, they're sort of close or reasonably close or directly adjacent to the major spring spawning base. Yep. Pretty much. Just slip out and find the deeper cabbage close to those spots. I haven't really even got a good look at this fish yet, Brad. It's just been having its way with me, honest to God. This is pretty wild. Big, I think it's a good 40. Big Len Thompson spoon. Yeah. Joe yesterday had one on, actually. I should have got it on for the, the banter last night. He put the biggest spoon, that's a decent one, on like a big husky devil, I think. Yeah. And uh, had about a 45. Ooh, that's a good one. Had about a 45 follow him in. I think that's the, probably the biggest of the trip. I don't know about that. So what do you want to do? We had issues yesterday with the cradle. Are we going to hand land it? It doesn't matter to me. Well, I can either take the camera and get him in close and you can grab him or vice versa. I can grab him. All right, well... It's a tag team effort. Yeah. I think he's pretty well hooked, so. You want to go around the other side where there's no rods? Come on, we're going for a walk. Over this way. That's, you gotta love braid. It was uh, scything through, and I'm actually on some cabbage now, just scything through the cabbage. Very, we might want to cradle it, Bren, actually. I hate to say it, unless you're, because I don't, I don't really want to lose it. Just try and keep the head up, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the other hooks don't get in it. You can try to do that. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Okay, we're going to actually shut the camera off and deal with this now. Alright, good start. What is it boys, day three? Day four? Three. Three on the lake. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, oh, today's Tuesday. Fourth. Yeah. Yeah, I guess if you can't. We're kind of lounging, having breakfast this morning, uh, late breakfast. Can't really tell by looking out there, but uh, mega wind, right? Like huge white caps? Yeah. Tomorrow it's tapering off to 60 kilometer an hour gusts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only problem with a big lake like this. 
We're going to try and poke our way out, right? I'm not sure. Take my like, paddle board out tomorrow. The paddle board. Mm -hmm. We shall see. We're going to be surfing those boats later. Surfing the waves. Not sure I'm going to be doing that. D-Man's not doing it. <laughs> I'm out. Day four, I believe, eh, Brian? Yeah. It's a late start. It doesn't look too bad. Right at the dock here. But, uh, she's blowing. Like, over there on the far side, it's just a sea of white caps. And, uh, I think it's up to 50k northwest winds. Tomorrow's even worse, like you're saying, up to 60k. There's very few places we can actually go right now, but I'm going to try and make it just around the corner. In the lee of the wind, there's uh, our, our little walleye neck down. And we're probably going to sit there for a spell, because it's better than sitting around at the camp. It should be an interesting morning. It's like got to be late. It's like 10.30 or 11 already, but it's just been blowing and stormy like all morning, and it's like cold, mega cold front, and we're not really into punishing ourselves, at least I'm not, not anymore, so we're going to have a little bit of a bumpy ride just to get around this corner up here. This is probably amongst the most sheltered spots on the lake today, our little bay here, but that won't last long. We got some nice sized waves here. The, the winds are crossing in two different directions, making like a, like a, I don't even know what to call it, a whirlpool. We did not make it too far, oh my god, from camp before we had to turn around. We've been the sun our first rodeo. But, um, we're not going to make it around the point. It ain't happening. No. No, it's not happening today. Well, we should hopefully be able to make it back to camp, I think. Let's You know it's bad when Mike Borger turns around in the weight ways. It has to be very bad for that to happen. Okay. <clears throat> so Brendan and I attempted to cross the raging sea. The sea was angry today, my friends. Not happening. Weird crosswinds, it was like pretty dangerous. So we're kind of stuck to like just right in front of the dock and around around our island here. So it used to be the uh, dock challenge, but it, uh, it's not going to be a dock challenge. It's going to be a Canada Fishing Guide Windy Day Challenge. The Blowhard Challenge. The Blowhard Challenge. Yes. So at the moment uh, we're going to in in moments we are going to commence our one hour challenge and. We're not measuring fish, it's just sheer numbers. Whoever catches the most fish in the one hour time span will win the award. We're gonna have an award ceremony in the in the lounge later tonight after dinner. So what you're saying is size doesn't matter. That's that's what I'm saying, yeah. Sure so size does not matter. So uh, every man for himself. Uh, no one gets any extra help. It's uh, cream cream rises to the prop or top. The well, cream rises you got an automatic advantage. I'm not the one on the tiller, am I? <laughs> You're just along for the ride, buddy. So, all right, here we go. The challenge is about to commence. I think Brendan and I, for the challenge, are going to troll. I have a little live target smelt on, and Brendan's got a little um, Rapala. I forgot what they're called now. Shad dancer. Shad dancer. This one will catch the most. Okay, we'll see. Far. We will see, Nothing won't we? Okay. Oh, D-Man is greasing us out. 
We started our chore right in front of camp. He's cutting in front of us. Automatic disqualification. Tensions are running high. It's actually getting shallower here. Ooh, there's structure. We like pumps. We're gonna start pumping. We like pumps. We like pumps. Come on, that rod's gonna go. I know it is. Ooh, the tensions are are high. Like we're side by side. Well, that was quite an intense challenge. We're just in the lee of the wind right now. Brendan is recuperating with peanut butter cups in the front of the boat there. <clears throat> We're still waiting for the consensus from these gentlemen here. Brendan and I tied. 6-6. Six, six. Although I didn't see the one walleye because I... turned your head I saw sure nothing. You You're look. such a liar. I'm not it's a liar. actually probably 6-5. It's 6-6. Six, six. I'm giving it to him. 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> We're going to just like motor up to these boys here and see what happened we we couldn't really film it was so intense while we were doing our challenge gentlemen it's over it's all over well, 10 minutes ago. So, how would you guys make out? Yeah. Zero. Ooh. 6-6. Six, six. Oh. We should have a fish off, but I don't really feel like it. We can yeah. share the golden... Did you only catch pike or did you catch walleye too? Walleye. So, it was like walleye, I made the bold move right at the end. Walleye for the win. Right off that point. Oh. Right off the sand point. There's walleye. We jigged it. Jig two or three up, right there. Oh. That's the spot. If you want to jig for walleyes, they're right there, <clears throat> right off that spot there. It's day five. We made a long run down to uh, what's affectionately known as the Honey Hole. This year was a total write-off, eh, Bren? First time ever at North Caribou, windbound. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. The ride down to uh, the Honey Hole today was pretty dicey. Oh. We rode some big swells, but it's protected in here, and uh, it's not a monstrously big pike, but hey, the water temperature, 57, it was like 55 out there, it's like 10 to 12 degrees colder than it's been uh, for the first four, four days of the trip, massive cold front, and the water temperature dropped. That's a nice chunky one, for sure. Beauty. <clears throat> Not bad at all. It's almost uh, tape measure worthy, that guy. I'll, uh, just for fun, before you throw that one back, we'll get a quick pick. Big red and white spinner bait. Which one was that, Brent? Pink and white. Well, pink and white. Red. Looks like red and white to me. A little bit to the left. Up a little bit. Like a little bit to the left. <laughs> uh, a little bit to the left. Okay, that was my right. Uh, the tail out a little bit. No, nope. a little bit to the left. Left. Head up. Okay, nice. There she goes. I think we're going to be here for a while. I, uh, I'm actually terrified about the drive back to camp. Brendan's got his hands are cold. Every time he throws a fish back or puts his hand in the water, he's done for about five minutes. Anyway, it seems like the pike are still biting, so let's get at it. Well, we really fished hard at the honey hole on day five. The wind picked up. There's a nice walleye. 
and uh, we gave up. We made the run back through the gauntlet of white caps, and we're at the neck down. There's a neck down just around the corner from camp. And the walleye are thick as thieves in here. It's like pretty much every cast. We don't have far to go get, to get back to camp. You can't really see it from here, but there's serious white caps. We're going to have probably maybe like half a kilometer of nastiness. But uh, it's pretty glorious right here where we're at. hit bottom without getting hit. We're hitting it on the drop right off this little reed point here. It's an apex spot. Very nice. That's a pretty nice chunky one. That's actually not a bad one. Actually, could use an anchor if that would help. Another nice chunky one. Oh. Me off. Very nice. All right, let's see if I can get one. I don't think it'll be too hard. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Little bugger. Fish on. Pro colored impulse paddle tail minnows and a 3 8 ounce pink and white jig head. You gotta love it. Ooh, this is a this is like a dark wall. I don't know if that is a wall. I just lost my jig. This is the exact what happens I think when it's you're... a sauger. No, that's a wall. Hold it up. It's got a big head on him. Yeah. A nasty old bugger. Cast as soon as hit bottom. This is one of those 200 fish a day spots. Easy. Here we go. Pitch it out. Usually they're hitting it on the drop here. But if not, it's usually about two or three little. Tugs and that's it. There, oh. there it is. Gotta wonder how many walleye are down there. Like, I'd love to put a camera down there. It'd be like carpeted. The bottom would be literally carpeted with stuff. What's amazing to me is this is like literally right around the corner from camp. <clears throat> a couple of years ago, whenever it was, like four years ago, I can't remember, in the fall, two of the fellows in our group fished this spot pretty prim much primarily. They were all like guys, and over 2,000 in the boat. There you go. Nice one. An average walleye.
we wanted to fish for big pike today, but I mean, the water temperatures dropped, I think, six degrees, and cold front. Anytime you see little puffy white clouds like this with high wind, it's usually a bad, bad thing. Temperatures dropped. Last night I could see my breath in the cabin. Yeah. It's absolutely cold front, so tomorrow is supposed to be really nice, but usually you need a couple of days of like sort of warm, stable weather before they really start hitting like crazy, but we're going to be gone by then, so. Got him? There you go. See if we can double up here. That took too long. Yeah, it took too long. Chunky well eye, another one. It actually gets boring after a while. <laughs> if you like jig jigging for walleye, this lake is something. I'll tell you that. Very chunky. Chunky monkey. Yes. It doesn't take too much to catch these fish on this on this lake. No. Use anything. I think we've said that about a thousand times. Yeah. It's true. Sometimes you don't even need to move your bait. You just let it sit there. When you brought all these plastics, we're basically using one thing. <laughs> that, I mean, you it never happens know. most of uh -huh. on every trip. You always you really need a handful of spoons and some plastics. It's amazing to me the um, how cold it is. Like I mean, it's still not quite September. It's still August, but boy, at this latitude, it can get cold. We're like bundled up, like it's like winter, it's early spring fishing. Yeah, number two thousand five hundred sixty-one. Yeah. Here we go again. It didn't take too long, again. It could be a better walleye. Yeah, I doubt it. It feels bigger. It feels bigger. It's a much bigger, it's a pipe. Yeah, this is, see this is like a, a saddle. That's an island right there, and this is the mainland right here. But there's like a bit of a pinch point, and we're right, there's like a reed point we're kind of jammed into. It's the narrowest section. It's a pike. <laughs> we're at our target species right now. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get sawed off very soon. <laughs> Such a good spot. Ooh, that looks nasty. I'd be shocked if you don't have to retie it. Oh, just raked it right over his tooth. You better check that. I have pounded this spot pretty good, so. Mm. It takes a little longer to catch the walleye. Yeah, so it yeah. It took an extra 10 seconds. <laughs> oh, okay. You really only need one bait. It's the impulse paddle tail. That's it. White. Well, 
I like them. They're, I like the profile. They have scent. I've been using them for years, but you could use anything. Yeah, I think we're only fishing in like, or we're catching them in like seven feet of water, probably mm. like eight feet of water. Mm, I don't know. It's shallow, in like six to eight feet deep, within twenty feet of just reed point, but then it drops into like fifteen. Not very far out there. There's it's just like a wall. The waves don't look as bad now as, thank goodness. I'd like to know where Joe and D-Man are. They're just sitting they're, in the cabin. I don't know what they're doing. They went out. <clears throat> D-Man doesn't like to be on the tiller when there's any, um, like, like caps on the lake. There you go. Oh, it's a giant. <laughs> Feels big. It's probably another pike. That's why the walleye... It's a walleye. Yeah, I can I can tell just by the tit 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 of the rod tip. It's a walleye. It's a walleye. There she is. Don't oh, flip him. No. Don't candy cane that rod, please. <laughs> It's a $350 Legend turn or Legend Elite or oh, whatever it is. Fish. Yeah. I don't think I'll take a picture of that fish. That that guy wanted it bad, didn't he? This guy's got a parasite in his mouth. So do you, you shouldn't talk. The iPhone takes, like, I hate to say it as sort of a quasi pseudo photographer, but the pictures are pretty much almost as good as my DSLR. I'll get one on this cast. Oh, no, no kidding. I wouldn't bet against it. It is a guarantee. It's a good time waster. Tomorrow, so today's Wednesday of our seven day trip. It's a Saturday to Saturday trip. And we've, <coughs> there's a fish. It's been tough. It's been pretty tough weather. We've had, <coughs> I'm just trying to think, like two out of the five days that have been pretty decent where we could travel anywhere, but the other three days have been, been tough. Yesterday we didn't even really get out on the lake. We, oh! That's See? how you break a jig. Carelessness right there. Well. But tomorrow, we got two more days left after today. Today was the walleye day. Like, we're definitely going to be... I'll be surprised if we don't hit 150. But, um... Tomorrow's, like, I think it's supposed to be 21 Celsius. Virtually no wind. Mostly sun all day long. So we're going to make a long run, I think. To Stewart Bay, which is in the far northwest corner. It's a spot where over six trips to North Caribou I have never it has never once failed to produce a big pike and Okay, now that I said that, like we're totally jinxed. Yeah, yeah. But we wanna fish some different water and see some different water anyway, so we're gonna go on a tour. And we will give that a shot. There's another river in the south west corner called the Nango. According to Kyle, the camp manager, like the la there was it was fished once this year and it was the last time was a group in June. So like two and a half months ago was the last time it was fished by anyone in this camp. It's like a big circle. Big tour. It'll be a long tour tomorrow. We're gonna load the cooler with lots of Food and drink. We'll be wearing flip flops and t shirts and yeah, layering on the sunblock. That's wishful thinking on my part. The one thing about people who come to this lake is I think they come here expecting to just put in tons of giant pike in the boat, doesn't matter where you fish. Mm. I don't know about that, but. You actually have to fish for them. <clears throat> Actually have well, to you have to put fish time in, put hours in. North Caribou is most definitely on par with 
plenty of destinations I've fished in northern Manitoba, northern Saskatchewan, but even on those waters, seasonally it's better when the fish are stocked up, the big pike are stocked up in the spring in the spawning bays. I call it cheating. <laughs> cheating, so yeah. Well, it's easy. But you really have to put your time in and you have to know where you have to eliminate on an 81,000 acre lake like this one you have to eliminate a ton of water and I can't remember whether I talked about it so far on the video but the on the uh, this trip but midsummer like August the the pike are out there absolutely their metabolism is at their highest they're getting close to their heaviest weight of the season they're the water's still warm enough so they're hyper aggressive and it's a simple pattern. It's deep cabbage in six to 12 feet of water. And it's like big flashy uh, baits, like blades, spinner baits, inlines, and Doctor spoons. Spoon. Spoons for us, we like our spoons. Like Spoon fed pike. But to, to narrow that down even more, it's, we, we focus in on the deep cabbage that are that's directly adjacent to the primary spring spawning base because I don't really think they migrate that far from where they spawn in the spring. As long as they have food, as long as the water temperature is where it should be, they're just going to slip out into slightly deeper water and that's where we found them. And the spot at the honey hole, <coughs> it's, it's a big wide area, but it's at the entrance and most people would overlook it but it's almost like a transition spot. Some of them have undoubtedly already filtered out of there and they're around the islands and spread out a little bit, but they're still, it's, I, I always like to say, like I look for nooks and crannies when it comes to big pike, narrow spots. Um, so there's undoubtedly large pike spread out further, like around the islands and the points and any place that looks good that has deep cabbage, but the, um, these pinch points, will concentrate the pike that are there so you have, they're more accessible and it's a prime spot and we, there was another spot like that we fished called the can opener right Ben? That was, that was epic, yeah. epic amount of cabbage we, we lost a couple of big pike in that spot yeah. you got them? there you go finally the only surfing I do is in a 16 foot lund these fish don't, they actually fight you know, they actually do fight. <clears throat> They're muscular. They're long, sort of like perfectly proportioned, clear, big fins, giant tails on these walleyes. Like they all have big, huge tails, honest to God. They, f they do fight like crazy. Beauty. Big heads on them. Yeah. That's usually a sign of a malnourished fish. Here, you can unhook this one too. Mine's bigger than yours. They're both pretty nice, actually. That's a pretty nice one, bud. Nice. You... Oh, this one's a nail. Oh, he the, is so in Yeah, you need the yeah, forceps for that guy, I think. There you go. Get your jig back out. Oh. oh. Missed him. Missed him. Oh, there it is. Oh. Come on, boy. Oh, this is another one of those inhale, inhale just your jig was like half pulled down. I'm gonna have to shut the camera off momentarily to deal with this fish. That was, Whoa. That was an accident. It's because it was so big that I didn't realize. Right. 
slowly bring them up, very slowly. Very nice. It's a raggedy looking one. Yep. This one got bit by like 45 inch pike, probably. Some of them have the sarcoma on them. It's quite common, but it, and it happens when they're like schooled up together. When there's vast amounts of them in close proximity to each other. Yeah. This, guy, this guy's fin is a little. Oh, look at that! Yeah, it is a raggedy looking one. <clears throat> All right. I just checked the clicker. We're at 137 right now, and I think we're done. I think we're done. Yes. I'm done. I've had it. Too many walleye. Too many walleye. I don't know if there's such thing as too many walleye. Well, for me, there is. If it wasn't so windy, I would suggest, you know, take a break back at camp and go fish a couple pike spots in the evening. But I don't think it's going to lay down. Hopefully it calms down. Yeah. Hopefully. That was like a week's worth of walleye that we just caught yeah, today. Most, most so. people catch that many walleye in their entire life. Well, there's another one, actually. I think that one was 137 or see there it I think was, we're like one, uh, 150 now I stopped counting at like 100 no we're not at 150 we're getting close though it was 135 or 136 a minute ago I'm not oh, sure but it's no. on the it was on that run you were reeling in you pulled the line off your reel with the with the um the rod holder there I didn't see <laughs> Blatant incompetence. That's gonna go in the blooper. Flipping them in like large round bass. Except these are better than large round bass. Yeah. All right. That's some pretty awesome water fishing here at uh, North Caribou Lake, my friends. I think that's it. Let's go take a break. Yeah, we're well, we're not done, done, but we're. Still have to make it back to camp alive. Yeah, we'll be fine. This is Brendan POV right now. We're about to enter the wasteland of wind. It looks pretty bad. It looks pretty bad. But we don't really have a choice, do we? Very fast. Very fast. Yes. That would be a very big mistake. I could do it. <laughs> well, I think it's about the same, or maybe a little worse than it was when we left in the morning. But if you got it back to the waves. You know what that means, Brent? I could get us back home safely if I was on the Oh, really? I'm very confident in myself. Oh. And now I understand why we didn't see Joe and Adam. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not great, but we've been in worse. We have been in a lot worse. We kind of sideways. And the problem with these waves is the troughs are so short between them. It's, I'm actually starting to get visions of the Lack Evans. No, this is not worse than Lack Evans. Not even close. 
good thing is we don't have far to go. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that far. I'm sure we'll make it back. Alright, I'm going to turn it off now and try to survive. That's the camp right there. The other two lads that are staying in the uh, little private cabin off to the side, they're just fishing in behind here. The whole lake, is, for the most part today, very much a sea of white caps. We yeah. haven't caught enough walleye, so we're just going to catch a few more. Yeah, we haven't caught enough. We're greedy. I think we're, we're going to intercept these guys here. I'm just going to film and uh, control the boat because it's incredibly difficult. Still yeah. 30 foot here? Yeah. Hey boys. Still 30 foot. Yeah. We need, we need an anchor. Alright. How are you guys making out? Yeah. Nice, nice job, Junior. That's okay. There's a new walleye in here. Oh, yeah. You gotta come right up here. Don't be shy. There's enough fish for, like, everybody. But there's a small little shelf here. They're sitting right on it. And it drops into 30 feet of water where you're at. There's nothing. Oh, that's deep. Did you guys try and go... Yeah. It was okay. I need a paddle tail. Uh, that one can survive for one more. Rod is that? Yeah, it's in the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, don't put that in the water. It's going to be bad. the island here. Next time you come out, we're bringing an anchor. Yeah, I need to go to the other side of the boat. Oh, missed it. There you go. Oh, a chunky one. Very nice. Yes. They seem to be a little bit bigger here. Yeah. In this spot. Yeah, actually, yeah. A little bit. I'm thinking I'm going to need a new paddle tail here. Yeah. Oh no. Steal. You steal mine, why don't you? There you go. Boat control. We need to back up a little bit further, but... Oh yeah. Yeah. Just so you know, I'm the shelf. There you go. They're stacked up. I, like I said, there's a bushel load of... Oh, I see. That's a little pike. I think it's a little pike. The ones that you don't want. This guy times by like 10. Yes.
taking longer than I expected. Yeah, there you go. A ten pounder. You ready for this one? Oh, oh you're never gonna see that it. one counted. I almost got a hook in my hand and passed the barb. Oh, almost. I'm just gonna drop. You can see it's like five feet there. It's like fourteen feet right here. You can see the shallow sand like right here. It's just like drops like a wall. Right there. That's Those guys need to get over here. If we had an anchor, like we should literally go back to the. To the thing and just grab an anchor and throw it out on that sand point. Oh yeah. But because we could catch them at will. It seems like it's almost as good as our wicked good honey hole spot. I have a feeling that they're not gonna be as like it's not gonna be as many on this spot just because it's so small, but there's obviously still a ton. Oh there's a ton of weight. Yeah. And like there's the camp right there. If you want to go out for some after dinner fishing, it's like right here. <clears throat> there you go. I just had that one on the bottom. One after I had another. Two feet off bottom. Yeah. It's yeah. a better one. That's they don't even, these ones don't even fight though, they just like come right up. I should, I should get a still of that one. That's a nice fatty. We found the lead. We're going up the side of it, actually. I still got 28 feet right here. There you go. They are a better class of well out here from this spot. Yeah, they're a little bit bigger. Chunky. I'm sticking Here. finger right now. Yeah. Don't do this at home, kids. You literally, right in front of your toe is the pliers. I got it. He's gone. Good. That's how you do it. There you go. Another walleye. High concentration, but it is a small spot. If you're off the spot by 20 feet, you're not catching anything. Paddle tail is very destroyed, but I don't care. I can get one more up. You get plenty more. Just put like a stub on there without any tail, and you'll get a fish. Yeah. You Drop it back down. You yeah. got him on right now. I know I have them on. You're oh. just oh, see. That's what well, you got for. Say, that's what you got for trying to show off. I was gonna say. He literally had the jig and he was swimming I, away with it. I was gonna say, you reel up like I've just done. Oh. Reel up like that and stop oh. it. And sometimes, I think we we, I, don't, we I told you we it don't, works. We don't do it that works. very often. We I do it every cast. It's, we're not live bait rigging for all eyes, Brent. Just reel up like a foot. Uh, yeah. They'll, they'll come up and you can hit do it. whatever you want here. It makes you look like a pro. I'm telling you, it gets more uh, hits. It gets me like five more oh, a day, oh, guaranteed. Oh, oh. He's a pro now. Nice clean wall, yep. Big tail. Pretty well proportioned. Yes. Just like me. Huh? <laughs> well proportioned. Let's catch one more and I'm gonna turn this off. The camp is calling. It has my it's saying, Mike, come back to the dock. <clears throat> There's hot coffee. Yeah, I don't know if I can catch one more, that's the problem. I think I'm uh, pretty sure he can. That would be my guess. This is where, this is where
where the strategy comes into play here. It's where I, I take out skills. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I got my pants pulled down. Yes, I sir. Did. I didn't film it, but he was curled up in the fetal position in the front of the boat for about an hour earlier today. I was sleeping. He complained a lot. I did not complain yeah. once, I just slept for an hour. Uh huh. While the pipe went on later. There you go. Another walleye. Chunky walleye. I don't I can't boat flip these ones, which is very annoying. Those are chunky walleyes. Oh yeah. Very nice. You wanna know where to grab them? Right behind the Thanks for telling me that. Right behind the I didn't know that. The sharp the point. Gill plate. For everybody out there. No, not with the gill plate, but this like sharp That's plate. called a gill plate. What is this then? That's a that's a gill plate. Yeah, but not behind it, just like yes. just on the edge of it. Right, not behind it, because then you're grabbing like the body of the fish. Yeah. End of the gill plate. End of the Tip gill plate. Tip of the plate. day from Brendan. Alright. Grab the fish by the gill uh, plate. Lip him. Yeah, I lip him like a largemouth. Alright, I'm gonna catch one. Then I got a coffee calling my name. Oh, that's way too far. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, that's a terrible spot. Over the side of the boat. That's the way to do it in, in the abyss of 30 foot of water. One more for posterity's sake. Oh, it's a big one. It's, yeah. It's a tanker. Well, they are. They are a slightly bigger class of walleye here. Uh, this is like a this island is kind of in the epicenter of the lake. It's a 33 inch There's walleye. There's no, <clears throat> not like we're in a saddle or anything. It's just a, the point of the island, but it's directly adjacent oh. to some pretty deep water. Oh, it's pulling drag. I mean, it's, this could be a little pike. It's a, it's a it's a 45 inch pike. I don't think so. It's a 39 inch walleye. It's a white fish. It's a big walleye. It's a walleye. You're just playing around with that thing. I would have had that thing up in oh two seconds. Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh, look at the mouth on that guy. He inhaled it. Yeah. He certainly did. Oh, there you go. Not bad. Yeah. Fist full of one eye. Yes. Dark Caribou Lake. We're almost off. Adam and Joe are heading south, I believe. We are heading to the far north northwest corner of the lake. Morning, fans. Yes, indeed. We've had nothing but like heavy winds and rain, and we got one day here, one little window. This is the window to make hay while the sun shines. Make it work. I have a feeling you guys are going to do well. There's big fish at that spot where they're going. Running right. there. It's either going to be like a really long boat ride, or uh, we might catch fish. I don't know, but uh, you got to try. We're making a long, long run to Stewart Bay in the far northwest corner of the lake. Yeah, we're loaded for bear. Coolers are loaded with drinks yeah. and refreshments. Optimism abounds. Optimism abounds. We are ready to roll. Have a good one, boys. Yeah, Take lots of photos. Hour-long run to one of my favorite spots. Kind of just got here. The, the big thing about this season compared to the other trips I've been here, there's a severe lack of cabbage. The water's super high, I think, everywhere in the north. And cooler temperatures, 60 degrees right now. But anyway, a little axe handle size pike 
good start to the day. We caught about a dozen, what do you call them, nuggets? No, they're small. No, so guys. It's not exactly a huge guy, but. Here, hold the rod for a second. Hold your hands. Oh. It's extremely hard to land these guys leaning over like this. Yeah. Mm, nice. It's a start. This is a spot I fished every time I've been to North Caribou and caught nothing. But we're kind of just, the, the, the apex spot was not producing. We're just moving around. I just pulled into this spot. It's the biggest of the trip. I don't know if it's it's a nice one. Oh, it's the biggest of the Big trip. Big Len Thompson spoon, actually. Yeah, they like that thing better than the dock shape. Well, no, I don't know. This is a decent one. This could be cradle worthy, actually, Brad. It is cradle worthy. <laughs> Finally. It was a, such a good hit, you know, like it just literally stopped dead. There was, there's a big difference between the hits of a small one and a big one. Oh, that's a good it's, That's Brent, the biggest of the trip. Brent, I actually think we, we need to cradle it. It's not hard I know, you, it's so fat. So. Like scraping on the bottom of the boat. It's like a tank. Oh man, I'm 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 being a little more ginger with this one because it's it's so lightly hooked. Can you take the camera? Okay, let's. Oh, jeez. No. Nice aiming of the camera there. Scything through cabbage. Okay. I don't, know if you, I don't think you can lean over on that side. Oh my god. There we go. Get it in, get it in, get it in. Close it, close it. Woo! Oh, it's an angry pike. Let's shoot the camera off and we'll deal with it. Awesome. Woo. Just after I got that last big one, we kind of drifted into the back corner of this bay here. It's a little shallower, like six feet deep. And I saw this fish. It was actually tilted up like this. It was, it was sitting there, just kind of just like looking up with this stunned expression on his face. And um, right, it was like right beside the boat. And like right at the end of my cast, this thing saw my lure and woke up and just snatched it. It's not a giant, giant one, but it's also not a... 36 incher. Yeah, well, it's probably what it is actually. Something like that, if that. It's not one of those little <clears throat> hammer handles we've been catching. A little girthier. There's no room. I got so much stuff in the boat here. I can't. It has got some length to it. I can't lean over. Stuff everywhere. Okay. I can take the rod if you want. Mm -hmm. Uh 
I got it. Chunky little monkey. Yes. Here we go. No. There we go. See ya. There she goes. Nice. We're just at the end of our day here. We had a pretty decent day. Lots of smaller fish, a couple of big ones. Right on cue, like the weather forecast said, rain at 4 p.m. Anyway, we pulled into this spot that we fished the other day. Affectionately known as the meat hole. It's full of meat. That fish. was unreal. That thing smashed Brendan's spoon. Okay, well, it followed it in the cast before, but I didn't see how big oh. it was. So I just tossed it out five feet in front of me and reeled oh. it in. And it I wasn't paying attention. All I saw was this massive explosion at the well, side of the boat. Like cradle, yeah. maybe? Yeah. Well. Sure, if you want. Absolutely. Right. It's okay. It's a decent fish. Not bad at all. No caribou lake, baby. Well, I'm a perch. Big. I'm a perch doctor. Then we switched over. Finally. <laughs> I've been hitting him pretty good on the perch doctor. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna do this. Want to hold that? Okay, hold on one second. Let me switch hands here. Okay. Really almost got it. Right, we get it. Okay, we got it. It's not a bad fish. Hold that up. Hooks and cradle. Nice. Not bad. All right. Oh, he's backing away. Yo. We're windbound today. We're playing cards. We got this, like, roadie table that was outside covered with garbage bags. We are about to play some cards. And I'm about to use a flamethrower. The young lad is about to use a flamethrower. Okay, this is our last day in camp actually this is the day we fly out and we normally never fish on this day but the plane's coming in i think noon when i'm not sure anyway I don't know. noon 1 p.m and uh yesterday was the first time in like 115 flying trips where we didn't fish not even for five minutes so it completely blown off the lake so today we are going to go out and fish for like two or three hours and see what we can do and like we can't not go look at this it's it's incredible he inhaled, he inhaled the, spoon. See the spoon this is our last little morning before the plane comes to get us it's been pretty dead eh Bren? like yeah. it was like six celsius overnight the water temps are high 50s get the cradle? working 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 we finally got a decent one that's a 40. Oh yeah, no, that's a nice one. The other lads are like right there. Low hole ass. Low hole ass. You sure you can't grab that one, Ben? Oh. It's so well hooked. I know. I like the hooks are going to get caught in there. Okay. Nice thick one. They don't fight too hard in this cold water, I'll tell you that much. Nice one. Yes. Nice. Alright. Well done, young man. Yep. Alright. This is like the eleventh hour of our trip here. We've got less than an hour and we made a run to an island saddle where I've caught some decent fish in the past. And <clears throat> boom. It's a decent one. It's I don't think it's a 40. It's probably like high 30s. We can get the tape measure out. No, that's actually not a bad one, I think ben. it's a 40. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, I, guess I don't think so, but it's not a bad way to end the trip. 
Nope. This one's fighting pretty hard despite the cold. <clears throat> Gotta love it. This is bonus time. Well, I mean, we didn't get to fish yesterday, so. The entire day. Yeah. yeah. Bonus time. You want me to hold the rod? Yeah. Uh, not that big. Oh, what is he going to do? And a big, like, copper and orange and kind of brownie colored Len Thompson spoon. Big one. Atta boy. There you go. Not bad at all. Not bad. Beauty. Yep. Let me see the side, like the whole side of the fish. Not bad. Yeah. Yep. They always have scars on the. A very large number of them have scars <laughs> from the sort of tail area. Cool. Yep. Right is here. Yep. D man, another trip in the books. Yeah, it's been a while. North Caribou 2022. It's time to go home. Oh, yeah. right. Trudeau is like your best friend. Usually, if the wind is pounding into them, it's even better. Nothing like pounding. Nothing like pounding. We're going to be in a lot of pounding. You have a lot of experience with that, huh? Mm. Yeah, well, I'm not doing no pounding with you guys. <laughs> That's a nice one. That's a long one. That's a long one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Ooh, that looked painful. You gotta love the names of these spots. They're a classic. The meat hole, the honey hole. What's the other one? No. The can opener. The glory hole. No, there's no glory hole on this lake. Maybe... Uh. You just left the barn door wide open with that one. I'm not going to say anything. Maybe in some bathroom in Thunder Bay there might be one. Okay, that's going on the blooper roll. Brendan is trying to catch a grouse. <laughs> oh, no. No patience. Shame. No pike. Shame. Shame. Where is the feces to throw at Brendan? You yeah. rode my coattails to victory after victory. Bullshit. He got a what on his hand? Um, a caterpillar, caterpillar. A caterpillar? Caterpillar. Ooh, a caterpillar. A cat. Cat, a dog-a-pillar. No, but caterpillar. A caterpillar. <laughs>